Hey guys, your tech Adam here, and today we're going to be building a file server, just like the video says on the tin. But why in 2023, well, almost 2024, would I be building a file server when these things are all the rage? This is, of course, a uh, network attached storage device, or a NAS, as most people call it. So why would I why would I build a file server when these are like the big thing right now? And the answer to that is simply because I did have a NAS. It's right here. Uh, and I filled it with hard drives and it was great. Until it died. And almost took my drives with it. And lost all of my data. So at this point I had two options. I could buy another NAS chassis and slot my drives into it. And start over. Which if you've been shopping for NASs, you know even the chassis themselves are very expensive. Or I could take some components that are already have sitting around and just turn this thing into a file server so that's what we're gonna do so let's jump in and I'm gonna show you the case I selected for this and then we'll get started on the build so this is the case that I selected this is an Antec P101 silent and there's a very specific reason why I chose this case and it's because it was the cheapest case I could find that had eight drop bays now I don't have eight hard drives, I only have five, but I do want to expand the system in the future. So I went ahead and got this guy because of the number of drive bays it has. So let's get it unboxed and take a closer look. So here we are, the Antec P101 Silent. I think it's a very sharp looking case, especially considering the fact that it's currently only $120 on Newegg. Very nice, it's very, uh, very simple, no crazy RGB nonsense no uh, glass side panels none of that and if you look in the front here it's got three big 120 millimeter fans for pulling those hard drives and that's one of the things i was actually pretty excited about because i'm pretty sure it was thermal design that killed my nas so having a lot of cooling was important to me as well all right now that we have the side panel off, you can see these eight hard drive bays. They are sort of like quick release with these little trays, but it's a little chintzy, it's a little cheap, but it is quick release, so they're not screwed in. So it's an improvement either way over the standard. All right, and as you can see, it's got this sound deadening everywhere on the inside of the case, so that's gonna help make it quiet. It's also got a basement to separate the power supply from the rest of the system to keep the uh, thermal efficiency up. We've got another 120 millimeter fan here in the back. And yeah, I think it's going to be a perfect platform for my file server build. Now, of course, there is no perfect solution to this. And one of the big sacrifices I'm making by building this file server versus going with another NASA's closure is obviously the size so the NASs are a lot more compact and I make I reckon that's one of the reasons why the chassis are so expensive compared to just a, a normal full-size PC case but fortunately in my situation size isn't really that much of a factor I have plenty of places I can tuck this thing away where it will be out of the way and quiet and won't bother anyone so I think this is actually going to be an ideal solution for me so with that being said let's go ahead and start looking at some of the components that I have all right, so here are the components. Now, one of the big factors for this build was the budget. Of course, I had just wasted a bunch of money on my NAS and it crapped out, so I didn't really want to spend a lot more money on stuff. So I mostly went with things that I already had laying around. That's why you're gonna see I have this really cheap looking uh, Logisys power supply. I think this came with an old case that I got at some point. It's not a very good power supply, but it's free or I already own it and it works. So for now, this is going to be the power supply I use. I do plan eventually to replace this power supply with something a little better, but we're just going to use what we have on hand at the moment. Next up, we have our motherboard. I've had this sitting around for quite a long time. It was actually part of an NVR build that I did for my dad that we eventually decommissioned, but it's an MSI H81M P33. Really old board. It's got an Intel Core 2 Duo, I think, on board. Uh, check. I'm not sure exactly which processor is in there. It's not a very good one. And it's got 8 gigabytes of RAM, which is going to be plenty for what we need. 
For the primary storage for the operating system, we just have a little 500 gig Toshiba SATA hard drive, nothing special. Again, already had it, so that makes it perfect. Next up, we of course have the five hard drives for our primary storage array. Uh, these are four terabyte drives, so we're gonna have a lot of good quality storage there, plenty of for my needs currently. And if I went to round things out, we have a just a little set of power adapter because this guy doesn't have enough uh, set of power connectors, so we'll definitely need that. And this is actually the thing that made me want to build this in the first place. So after my NAS died, I was initially kind of bouncing ideas around about what I wanted to do. I was kind of going between buying another NAS chassis or uh, building a file server like this. And I was just kind of searching for stuff, trying to get an idea of what I wanted to do. And I came across this guy on Amazon of all places. Uh, it's a StarTech product and it's just advertises an eight port uh, SATA controller card, um, which nothing special there. But what really got me is based on the pictures, it looked like it had mini SAS connectors on the back. And it didn't really specify that anywhere in the listing that I could see, but I was almost certain that's what it was. So I went ahead and bought it. And what do you know, it does indeed have two mini SAS connectors right on the back. That's exactly what those are. And it comes with these breakout cables. So just to go from mini SAS to uh, four regular SATA plugs and of course we have two of these so we can do eight drives on one card so when I saw this and I saw the price this was going for I immediately bought it because an actual SAS controller card they're usually pretty expensive but this thing was like a hundred bucks so that's not terrible considering what you get now I did look at some reviews and there are some complaints about it and I'm not sure if it's even going to work with the operating system that I'm going to be using so we're going to be finding that out all shortly, but before we do that, I need to actually put the machine together. Um, I'm not going to record any of the build process because there are hundreds of thousands of PC build videos on the internet. So if you want to see a PC build, go watch Linus Tech Tips. I'm not going to record that. I'm just going to skip to when the build is complete, and then we're going to talk about the uh, software that I've chosen. And we'll actually jump into the installation and software configuration stuff, which is what I think is the more interesting part. All right, so I've managed to hit my first roadblock with this build. This is the connector for the CPU power, and it just doesn't quite make it where it needs to go. But um, fortunately, since this is a cheap, crappy power supply that I don't really care about, I think I have the things I need to make it work. All right, so it is done. Um, I've got the... Uh, machine sitting on this tile here so I can slide it around really easy but uh, it looks pretty clean from this side as you can see I did solve the uh, the issue with the power cable and I'll show you that here in a second but we've got the five drive base here on the left filled out everything else is tucked away real nice and neat the car fit in there real easy we got both the cables plugged in so let me swing it around here and this is the disaster zone so here is my Solution for the cable being too short. I just cut and spliced it with some spare cable That's probably going to catch on fire, which is fine. That's cool And then of course we had to add a few of these little uh, Adapters here Molex to SATA power in order to have enough power for all of the uh, Hard drives in the system. So I'm sure the power supply is immediately uh, Going to just blow up because it's going to draw way too much power as soon as we plug it in so that's cool, too uh, but other than that everything seems to be good uh, I've got the fan controller plugged in as well, so we'll have all of our fans running, and we should be good to go ahead and power it on. So let's give it a shot, see what it does. All right, I've got her all plugged up. I'm even so confident that I went ahead and put in my boot media for the installation and hooked up a keyboard, mouse, and monitor. I am not confident enough, however, to put the side panels on because... You know if you put the side panels on for the first boot, something will absolutely 1000% go wrong, so you just never do that. But we're ready to go. Now this motherboard is set to power on immediately as soon as it receives power. That's just the way it was set up when it was being used as an NVR, so I actually had the power supply switch off. So I'm going to reach around back there and give it a flick, and we'll see what it does. We'll see if that power supply actually manages to survive. Here we go. 
Well, it didn't go bang. Oh. We're getting something on screen. Okay, so unfortunately we do have an issue. We are only seeing four of the five hard drives. And I'm not sure if it's because of the way I have the drives connected to the card or if it's just an issue with power. Um, I will say that, well, I think that might be the issue. <laughs> I just barely pulled that uh, connector and it came on out. So let me pop that in there a little better and we'll give it another try and see what it does. Okay, that was it. We now have all five hard drives showing up plus the boot drive. So now we can move on to the installation. So my plan is to use uh, Open Media Vault as the base OS because it's basically just Debian with Open Media Vault installed on top of it. Like it's very, very plain Debian. And then I'm going to use uh, Docker to install Jellyfin for uh, serving up my media over the network and over the internet. And then I'm also going to install um, Image. And Image, spelled I-M-M-I-C-H, is a neat little program uh, that basically acts as a backup location for your photos kind of like Google Photos but you host it yourself so that's the plan um, like I said Open Media Vault is going to be the base OS it's going to be installed directly on the hard drive and then Image and uh, Jellyfin are going to be running in Docker containers so they'll be really easy to update and manage that way but uh, that's basically the idea uh, I don't know how well it's going to work out, so let's go ahead and boot the installer and see what happens. I thought this was pretty neat. The card actually has individual indicators for each hard drive on it. We get some nice blinking lights. It's pretty fun to watch. Alright, so the install has gone off without a hitch. So now that everything's booted up and running and on the network, we can hop over to my computer and hit the web interface to log in, do some initial configuration there. And then we should be able to SSH in to install Image and uh, Jellyfin. So let's get started on that. Okay, so we are now over at my computer and we are in a web browser and it's actually several days later from the last clip. Uh, I had recorded a whole section but ran into a bunch of trouble trying to initialize the RAID array and it ended up that one of the drives was actually dead. So the NAS did unfortunately take out one of my four terabyte hard drives. Uh, since then I've initialize the array with just four four terabyte drives and that's enough storage for now uh, so let's go ahead and log into the web interface and we'll do a few things and then move on to setting up image and jellyfin so to get there we're just going to type in the host name ida.local that'll bring us to the login page and by default the admin password is open media vault all lowercase all together uh, but of course I've changed that and I would recommend you change it from the default as well. So here we are on the dashboard and when you first log in it's going to prompt you to set up the dashboard uh, and you can actually do that through the user setting menu as well. So user setting dashboard and you can just pick the widgets that show up here basically and turn on dark mode which I've done here. As you can see two of my other hard drives do actually have some bad sectors but they seem to be okay otherwise. Uh, so we're just going to run it as it is. My plan is to eventually purchase another three 8 terabyte hard drives because I have two currently. And then I'm just going to rebuild the array with the 8 terabyte drives. But for now, we're just going to set things up as they are because we already have the drives. So we're going to pop her to storage here and we're going to get on software RAID. This is where you would create your RAID array. You just click add and then select the devices you want in the array. As you can see, I've already done that. If you're creating a RAID 5 array like I did, be prepared to wait a while for the RAID array to initialize because it does take time. Um, if you're using RAID 5 or RAID 6, if you're using RAID 1, 0, or 10, it actually doesn't take very long to initialize at all. And that's just because RAID 5 and RAID 6 use parity and it has to build the uh, 
the table and everything and it just takes forever um, but just be prepared for that and also for whatever reason omv doesn't say anything about waiting when you start creating the eraser array before you create the file system but you're going to want to wait because if you try to create the file system while the eraser array is still initializing you're going to like triple the time it takes to complete all of that and it, it's it gets way out of hand so initialize the eraser array first and then create the file system on top so once your array is initialized, you're going to go to file systems, and then you'll create your file system here. I'm using ext4. There's several options in there. I don't know which one's the best, to be honest. I just went with ext4 because I'm familiar with it from messing around with Linux for all these years. So that's what I went with. Okay, so now we're ready to actually create some shares, and it is a little unintuitive. Uh, it's a little confusing, to be honest, because we're going to be sharing these with um, SMB, or uh, Samba, as it's called in Linux. Um, so to do this first, we have to actually create the shared folders. So we're going to click shared folders here and then we're going to create one for each share that we want to have. Uh, I'm just going to do one for now as an example. So we'll do a folder called movies. We'll select our array and then save. And then you would think that would be it, but that's not actually it. After you apply it, you actually have to go down to services and then SMB, and then shares, and then you have to add the share here as well. So you go in here and select it, then save. So now that you've created the, the share in the SMB service, now it is actually available to access from within Windows. If we open Explorer here, we can actually type in the host name, and we should see our share. There it is. So now that we have a share set up, let's go ahead and test the speed. Um, this is sitting on my network, which is a gigabit link between the two. So we should get around 100, 110 megabytes per second across, which equates to about 800 and something megabits per second, which is close enough to the one gigabit link. It's, it's a little weird because you're never going to get the full one gigabit link because there's overhead for the protocols and stuff so the best you can hope to get is like 850 860 um normally i'm sure there are ways to make it actually push to the maximum but in a realistic normal computer network that's what you're going to expect to see so let me find some movies i'll copy them over we'll see what kind of speed we're getting okay so i have a three and a half gig file here so we're just going to copy it over and see how long it takes Okay, so that wasn't too bad, actually. We were getting right around 111, 112 megabytes per second, so that equates out to about 800 and something megabits per second, which for a 1 gig link, that's pretty much about the best you can expect. So I think we're pretty much perfect as we are. Yeah, it's... Okay, the next thing we're going to look at doing is installing Jellyfin and Image, and these are going to be installed as Docker containers. So before we can install those, we need to set up Docker. So I'm on Docker's documentation here for installing it in Debian, and we're just going to copy paste these commands into the command line and get it installed. So in order to do this, I'm just going to SSH straight into the server. You can usually do this in PowerShell on Windows. And now we're logged in as if we were sitting right in front of the machine. So we will just start copying these commands over. Okay, so that's it for the Docker install. So now we can test it using this command here. And this uh, message here means that we've installed it correctly. So now we can move on to installing Jellyfin. Okay, so this is the Jellyfin website and we're looking at the installation instructions for Jellyfin using Docker Compose. So there is a little pre-work we need to do first. There are some paths that are specified here that we need to create first. And then from there, we can copy this over into a file uh, using this file name. And then we just execute it using this command. 
So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so we need to create a config folder and a cache folder, and I'm just going to create them in my uh, user's home directory. Um, so we will make sure we're in the root of the home directory here, or, or the my user directory, uh, which is slash home slash Nicholas. Uh, of course, yours will be your username. But we're just going to create a couple folders here. I'm going to create a first one called dot jellyfin. And that's just going to make it a hidden folder in the root of my home. Um, so CD over to that. And it's empty. So now we're going to create our um, cache folder and our uh, config folder. Okay, so now that we have the folders created, I'm just going to go um, back to my home folder. And we're going to cd into downloads. And this is empty. And here we're going to go nano. And we're going to do the name of the file, which is docker compose dot yml. And this will create that file and open it for editing. Okay, so this is what my docker dash compose yml file ended up looking like. Uh, so here we just specified the folders that we created. And then down here we specified the path to the folders that we are going to be storing our media in. I just did two movies and shows. And you can find this path in um, OMV. Uh, by just looking under storage and then shared folders and then absolute path is what you want You can just pop that right in there and then from there we should be good. So we're gonna We're gonna exit out of here. We're gonna save We're gonna give it that file name Okay, so now we should be able to bring the container online by doing Docker compose up Okay, so I had a few things wrong in the configuration for the uh, Docker container, but I fixed those and I re-installed uh, the Docker container and everything seems to be good now. And I can run the docker um, ps-all command. And there we go, we can see that the container is up and running and it says it's healthy. So that means we should be able to get to it uh, from the web browser. So we're gonna do iota. Uh, local and Jellyfin uses the port 8096. So 8096 on the other there. And there we go. We are in the web interface. So now we can do the initial setup. So, Alright, so I set up my two uh, shares that it's going to use, our media libraries, I guess. And English, United States, yep. Allow remote connections, yep. It's good. And finish. This login. And there we go. And we've already got one movie showing up here. That's the one that I copied earlier as a test. So that's good. I think that's Jellyfin pretty much set up. Um, I'll have to go through and do some, some preferences and stuff to kind of get things the way I want them. But by and large, it's already good. And look, it's already pulled down the the artwork for the uh, for the for that movie. Perfect. So I guess next we can move on to setting up image. Okay, so here I am in the image documentation and we're gonna use another Docker Compose uh, file here to set up image. It looks pretty forward, straightforward. They just want us to create a, uh, an image app folder um, and then download their Docker Compose and an example.env file. I think we have to rename that to uh, just dot env but this wget command should take care of that anyway so yeah let's pop over to iota here and we will make that directory so image app and cd image app copy that wget command that should download it for us 
Yep. And then we will do the env file as well. Okay, so it looks like we need to edit that .env file and add a few things in here. So we will do, we'll open that up in nano. So here's what we got. Um, location where your uploaded files are stored. So that's gonna be the share that I created on uh, NOMV. I'm not sure where that device got named so weirdly because it's supposed to like create an ID and name it that, but it's like it's using some sort of placeholder name. I don't know why I did that, but I don't think it matters enough for me to look into fixing it. Run Docker Compose up and it should pull it in. I think we're good. And I don't know which port, 2283, I think is the port for image. Hey, there we are, image. All right, so now I should just be able to log in. Okay, that's it, we're in. So now I can start uploading photos and um, I'm also gonna start dumping all of my movies and TV shows and files over to uh, OMV. So I guess I'll do that now and I'll come back when it's all done. All right, so it's been about a week now and I actually managed to get all my files copied over so I got my, uh, all my videos and and uh, other miscellaneous files copied and I was actually able to get all my movies imported into uh, Jellyfin here and I got all my photos from Google Photos uh, downloaded and imported into Image. Obviously I'm not going to show that because there's a lot of personal stuff in those photos but everything's working as expected and I'm very happy with the way it's been performing now that I've been using it for a little while. And uh, I think this has been a great success. So with that, I think that's pretty much the end of this project. I'm looking forward to it serving me for the next few years at least. And I'm going to get started actually. Uh, I got to buy a power supply one. And I've already ordered one of the three 8 terabyte hard drives that I'm going to end up using to replace the, uh, the current array. So when time comes for that, I'll probably make another video about it. But until then, thanks for watching, guys. See ya. So here's where I finally decided to tuck the server away for now. It's just kind of in my game room. Uh, and the reason for this is I actually have a closet that I want to put this guy in, but I don't have power or data in there yet. So temporarily it's just going to sit here, and I'm going to have to drag it out anyway when the new power supply arrives to install that. So you probably just have it somewhere where it's uh, easily accessible. One side note. I did actually unplug the indicator for the hard drive um, and that's because that white LED was just so freaking bright that it would like light up half the room when the lights was out and it was kind of annoying so I just unplugged it from the motherboard for now. When I put it in the closet I'll probably plug it back in. And here's that closet I'm planning on actually tucking it in. There's no power or data in there yet but that's one thing I'm just going to have to do and all these clothes are going to be coming out of here so it'll be pretty empty when I go to put it in. I've actually thought about installing a, uh, a rack on that back wall just so that I can uh, get some server equipment and uh, rack it up back there, but we'll see. Oh, and this is that dead 4 terabyte hard drive. Unfortunate, but I guess that's the only casualty of the, the old NAS.